Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So um, there's so many places where I could start in so many directions. You know, sometimes I'm like, Lord, which way do you want, do you want me to go? Because, I mean, I can go in a lot of directions. But how many of you know, I mean, I don't think any minister here is necessarily looking for, although it's very encouraging, we're not really looking for your amens for your approval. We are looking for uh, uh, God's voice to be spoken through us. Amen. And we offer ourselves, as a matter of fact, as the body of Christ, you have to understand that um, in these days, and I love what Apostle Darlene said, because I, I thought I was going to go in that direction <clears throat> uh, today, but um, I realized it wasn't really the assignment that God has for me, even though uh, that is something that is passion, uh, that I'm passionate about right now, or just, I guess, studying more of, but it's vital for the body to be led by the Spirit of God. It's so vital that everything that happens in this, we are in the end of the last days. We're not just in the last days, but we're actually in the end of the last days. And uh, it's so important and it's so vital for us to be connected to him because one, this is new territory. This is new things that nobody's experienced before at least in the earth, all right? And so, um, and uh, our, as a matter of fact, the things that happen, the things that don't happen is as a direct result of our yieldedness and our fellowship with the Godhead. In other words, what we, because see the scriptures, remember it says what we allow on earth Come on, must be allowed in heaven, whatever we loose on earth. There's some loosing of things that need to take place. There's some things that uh, need to be allowed, and there are some things that need to be shut down. And God has given us the authority in the earth. We're the only ones that he's given this authority to. And so this is why I say everything is dependent. Everything that happens, everything that doesn't happen is dependent upon the church's uh, yieldedness, the church's ability to yield and fellowship with the Godhead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, you know, some things uh, we know that uh, the things that needed to come to pass, you know, even with the first coming of Jesus, uh, God used voices. He used people in the earth to proclaim it, to declare it. Some of them were praying, right, to pray it out. And so uh, we know that that is the case for the first coming, and, and it certainly will be the case and is the case for the second coming of our Lord Jesus. Amen. And so um, in saying all that, that's not uh, my point, but I'm just saying that it's, it's a critical time to understand. And as Pastor Marcia said, that we are all part of one body. And this is the body of the Lord Jesus. It's not, it is so important that we understand and not just understand, but we see the reality of, uh, of yourself being important to God as a member of the body. Because each member has a role and a function. Amen. So uh, we're going to look at a few scriptures here and uh, we're going to take uh, some time to to really uh, focus on what the Lord is saying. <clears throat> um, we'll start with Ephesians chapter four. And. Um, Ephesians chapter four. And I'll be reading um, from uh, different translations as I did on Monday, but especially um, the Passion Translation. I'll be reading from uh, the CSB. I know you don't have that one, but also I'll try to avoid that as, as much as I can. Um, but also uh, the New King James. So in Ephesians, okay, great. Um, chapter 4. Let me get there. In Ephesians chapter 4, hallelujah. Uh, well, we, we can just start. There's going to be quite a bit that we read, okay? Um, but, and then some of it we'll just go through quickly because uh, we don't have time to go through everything. Um, let's just start in verse 1. Therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord, in, in the CSB version, sorry about that. Um, I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received. 
with all humility and gentleness and patience, uh, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. Now grace was given to each one of us. Grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. For it says, when he ascended on high, he took the captives uh, captive, he gave gifts to people. Let's skip down to verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Verse, uh, skip down to verse 15. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him, the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building itself up in love by the proper working of each part. Now I'm going to go to the Passion Translation. And I want to emphasize some things here. Uh, because uh, I know that many of us have heard or maybe you even would say in, that you believe that uh, God has called each and every one of us as members of the body to a specific assignment. I'm sure you have heard that uh, God had said in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 that I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you. And so even though these are, uh, this is in the heart of God and this is his plan and uh, he knows it, um, if you continue to read those verses after that, 12 and 13, he says, therefore, you know, you got to go to him and I'm going to paraphrase here you got to go to him and seek him right and for those that will seek him he will reveal himself to you and then he'll show you who you are and so and, and then he'll show you your plan the plan that he has for you because how many of you know him saying that I know that the plans that I have for you him saying that is not just to say I know the plans but he wants you and I to know the plan and I'm speaking here because I'm finding that in the body, I'm, I'm going along this way because I'm finding that still in the body of Christ, that many do not see themselves. They understand and they see how big God is. They understand and they see how big the apostle and the prophet and the pastor and the teacher and the evangelist is. They see how big everybody else is. And as I said on Monday, you know, if you're going to do anything significant, if you're, going to do, if you're going to accomplish the plan of God in your life, you will have to come to know who you are in Christ. And that's not going to come any other way except you see it in the word of God. You're going to have to see it for yourself. But understand that there is a plan. There is an assignment. It says to each one of us that we have been appointed grace. Verse 11 says, again, in the Passion Translation, and he has appointed some with grace to be apostles and some with grace to be prophets and some with grace to be evangelists and some with grace to be pastors and some with grace to be teachers. And listen to this, their calling, our purpose, our calling is to nurture and prepare, everybody say, all all the holy believers to do their own works of what? Say, I have a ministry. If it works better for you, because sometimes we use words in our circles and then we get all religious with it. You know, we, my husband calls it Christianese. So instead of ministry, just say, I have a service that God has called me to. 
Because if we think ministry, sometimes we think it has to look like so-and-so's ministry, or it's got to be in a pulpit, or it's got to be, because come, come on, these things confine us when we are stuck in that mold. Come on. Like Apostle Darlene said, we're stuck with the, with the law of things that we're not being led by the Spirit of God. These are new times. These, you understand, these are untraveled paths that no one has yet experienced. The only the spirit of truth who John told us dwells in us and will remain in us forever. He's the spirit of truth. He's the only one that's going to show us. Even he said will show us things to come. So the only way we're going to know, you know how sometimes things kind of sneak up on you and, and someone says, well, how was I supposed to know? We have a way of knowing ahead of time. If we will stay connected. If we will stay in fellowship, if we will stay yielded to the spirit of the one who knows all. He's in the future. He knows what's to come. Praise God. So we all have an assignment. Come on, say, I have a ministry. I have a service. This is our purpose, to nurture, prepare all the holy believers to do their own works of ministry. And as they do, this as they do, as they do, this will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. So as we equip you, come on, this will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. These grace ministries will function until we all attain oneness into the faith, until we all experience the fullness of what it means to know the Son of God. And as I said on Monday, this knowing is not just the knowledge of it. You are fooling yourself, James said, if you're just hearing and you can recite it and you know it up here. Until you see it, come on, in the reality, and you're, and you're walking in the reality of the things of heaven. See, understand this. The kingdom of heaven, I was, I was <laughs> everything in the kingdom of heaven operates this way. By grace through. Grace, the grace of God is, is kind of like a bank account. But instead of just where you can uh, only deposit money, you can actually deposit all heavenly resources. And if, if grace is like a bank account, then faith is like a withdrawal slip. Are you hearing me? So, so God, everything, come on, we're saved by grace through Faith. Come on, it's by God's grace, yes, he actually gives us the ability to even have access to eternal life. But it's by faith. It's not just automatic. You're going to obtain it by faith. And what is faith? Faith, in its simplest terms, is believing what God said and acting like it's true. Not acting like an actor does in Hollywood. I mean, like, you're going to just put it into action. You're going to believe what he says about you. You're going to believe what he says you can do. And uh, I think it was Pastor Nicole that said it a couple times this week. You know, the, the scripture says, you know, a bishop, and it's talking about, you know, one who is like a, a shepherd, a bishop, whatever, rules his house. Uh, one of the qualifications is to rule your house well. I, I personally believe, now, if it's not true, I know the context in which it was said in, and that was what she used it in, his house. But I also personally believe that that's a twofold meaning, he who rules his house well. And what you have to understand is as you and I, each as members of the body, we each have an assignment. We each have a ministry. God has graced us. He gave us, it's his ability. So see, you got to understand that it has nothing to do with your ability. It has nothing to do with you in, in, in and of yourself. It has to do, and what, you know, we have to take the time to make sure that our people are not just becoming religious pew sitters, church attenders. Is church attendance necessary? Absolutely. Jesus said, don't forsake the assembling ourselves, especially as we see the day approaching. Especially. But to, to come together even all the more. 
So you wonder, it's like Pastor, Pastor Troy say, you know, you wonder why they keep having these conferences. Why they keep having, we're not having it because we have nothing else to do. But we're trying to tell you, you've got things to do. So you got to get things in order in your house. Come on, how do you do that? By grace. So he already enabled us. He gave us the ability through or by grace through faith. So what is that? He gave us the ability. I'm going to believe that he gave me the ability and I'm going to act like it's true. So he says, verse 12. And they're calling us a nurture, verse 13, these grace ministries will function until we all attain oneness into the faith, until we all experience the fullness of what it means to know the Son of God, experientially know. Come on, you don't just know up here. You don't just know his ways. You, you experience his ways. In other words, he says it like this, and you're actually experiencing it like he said it. that know the Son of God, and finally we become one into a perfect man with the full dimensions of spiritual maturity and fully developed into the abundance of Christ. And then our maturity will end. Everybody say, praise God. Somebody already said it, <laughs> and I think <laughs> Apostle Darlene said it. You know, the kingdom's not for babies. Yeah, the kingdom has babies, but it's, it was never meant for us to stay babies. God's intent is not only for salvation because, see, some people, you see, salvation is just salvation. That's, that's what it is, right? Thank God for salvation. But there's a step beyond that. Why? Because we've all been called to the ministry of reconciliation. We are call, all called to reconcile what was lost to man. Come on, man reconciling back to God. And specifically, we, he has a way for you to carry out your assignment to, on how to do that. And so he's saying here, he says, uh, then our maturity will end. And we will not be easily shaken. See, the, the, the church that's easily shaken is the church that's immature. We won't be easily shaken by trouble, nor led astray by novel teachings, or by the false doctrines of deceivers who teach clever lies. We've got the spirit of truth on the inside of us. But instead, we will remain strong and always sincere in our love as we express the truth. All our direction and ministries will flow. This is for the mature. Will flow from Christ and lead us deeper into him, the anointed head of his body, the church. For his body has, formed in, uh, has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. And all these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body. We are built up and made perfect in love. Skip down to verse 30. The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. So never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted his holy influence in your life. Everything that we accomplish in him, everything that we obtain and we walk in, in the kingdom, it's going to be, it's going to happen by grace through. And if our faith is like a withdrawal slip, it's time for us to really understand some things. Oh, man. That the Lord is saying to us. Because sometimes, you know, when God is your, let's go back, go back up to um, verse 17. Hallelujah. Now I want you to understand this again. In order to qualify for the calling, come on, because he says right there in the beginning, we started out and it said for, uh, 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 or I'm sorry, I didn't go there, but in, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, 
For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So grace is given as a gift. All grace. And then in, back in verse 1, as we read, he said, I urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received. Walk worthy. How? With humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. This grace was given to us. Now let's go to verse 17. Because again, we're talking about this house, this house. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? So we're talking about this house, keeping uh, and understanding the authority we have in this house. Verse 17, so with the wisdom given to me from the Lord, I say, you should not live like the unbelievers around you who walk in the empty in their empty delusions. I want to switch it. I want to go back to the, uh, let's go back to the uh, Christian Standard Bible. Because this is what I looked in it most. Therefore I say this and testify in the Lord. You should not, you should no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding. Excluded from the life of God. Because of what? The ignorance that is in them. And why do they have ignorance? Because of the hardness of their hearts. They became callous and gave themselves over to promiscuity for the practice of every kind of impurity with a desire for more and more. Don't pattern yourselves after this world. He says something similarly in, 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 in um, Romans chapter 12, does he not? Romans chapter 12, in verse 1, we're going to come back here, by the way. We're coming back to uh, Ephesians 4, but I'm getting somewhere here. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Instead, think sensibly. As God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, as we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way, we who are many, come on, are one body in Christ and individually members of another. This is what I was saying before. According to what? The grace given to us. This grace is not just for the ministry in which he's called us unto, but understand that this grace is for the life that he called us to live that is different from the life of this world. This grace, the grace that he has given us enables us because the ministry that we're called unto, it's, it's, in, it's twofold. Yes, it's who we are. It's what we do. It's both things. So he says... Uh, in the same way, verse 5, or verse 6, according to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it according to, uh, according to the proportion of one's faith. If service, use it in service, in teaching. We talked about this on Monday. Now let's go back to uh, Ephesians chapter 4, because I want to finish here. So we're going back. And we're staying in the Christian standard Bible. So uh, it says again, don't, don't copy, don't be like the world. Don't be futile in their, their, futile in th their thoughts. They go after the things that we should not go after. Their goal is a different goal than the b believer's goal. Their goal in life is a different goal than the believer's goal. Verse 20 says, but that is not how you came to know Christ. Assuming you heard about him and were taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. 
to take off your former way of life. The old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self. The one created according to God's likeness and righteousness and purity of the truth. And therefore putting away lying. Speak the truth. Each one to his neighbor. Because we are members of one another. Be angry. Do not sin. Don't let the sun go down to your rest. So he's given us a list of things. How are we going to put on How are we going to put on righteousness? How are we going to take off that old man? How are we going to put it on? I'm pointing this out to you because, see, the goal of the, the believer, the goal of the believer is like what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3. And I mentioned this again on Monday. The goal of the believer is to press towards Jesus, to be like him, right, in everything that we do. But why is it that we see so many believers in the body, their goal doesn't, it, it doesn't seem like that's really the goal, their goal. How do I know that? Because their daily life doesn't line up. The daily practices that they do in life, it's not lining up. And why is it that I'm seeing so many believers bound by things even in their soulish realm? Because we're not putting to practice the things that God said he's enabled us to do. So, for example, he says, don't be like this world. I've called you to something. I have a purpose for you. My purpose is for you to reconcile man unto me. And I have a specific plan on how you're going to accomplish this. And this plan involves you Come on, by grace, I gave you the ability, but you're going to have to use faith and believe what I said can be done, can be done. First and foremost, in you. So when people get upset with me, come on, because I've, I've, had, I've had times where I had a, dis, a disagreement with somebody, and we're, we're just, you know, talking it out or whatever, and they said something, and I said, well, well why, would you, why would you feel that way? And they were so offended. I said, you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel that, and I didn't even get, get it all out. This is supposed to be a believer. I didn't even get it all out before they said, don't tell me how I should feel. You don't get to tell me how I should feel. And I sat back for a moment because, first of all, I was shocked that they said that. But then I realized the Holy Spirit actually helped me because I said, oh, they have a good point. The Holy Spirit said on the inside, they actually have a good point because they have not made Jesus Lord over their soul. See, they don't really believe that they have the ability to control their soul. To, to allow their spirit man to be the bigger man on the inside. Come on, build up that spirit man to where it's so big that it can actually control your emotions. That it actually can control those thoughts. You understand as a believer. Come on, I'm getting to the stuff that we just don't really talk about as much. But I'm talking about when thoughts come. Thoughts can come. Do you know thoughts can come from Satan himself? Do you know why thoughts can come from Satan? Some of the reasons why. Because we have, we give him a door. And usually that door is the flesh. The flesh, if we live a life that's run by the flesh, come on, we sow to the flesh, we reap what? Death. There is a way that seems right to man. If we yield to the, the soulish realm, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, these, it, it actually is subject to whichever part of us is going to be bigger and stronger, our flesh or our spirit. And I know Pastor Earl was talking about that. I was like, man, he's talking about something. But understand, we actually have the ability. So I stood back and I said, oh, and the Holy Ghost said, she's right. You can't tell her because she has not yielded her life. She has not said, I made Jesus the Lord of my life. And when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you realize through scripture, come on, you just got to read Ephesians, and you will see that you've actually been made, you've actually been given power and the ability 
when thoughts come that are not godly, that are not pleasing, come on, when feelings come that don't line up with the word of God, when they come, you can actually change it. You can actually make an adjustment and refute it, cast down every thought, imagination, even you can do it with feelings too. You actually have control over that. You have victory over these things. So when there are times when, when you know, the word of God may be preached, like all week, giving, 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 sowing, honor. And there's times where in your flesh, you got to recognize the voice of your flesh, the voice of your soul. You're agitated because of the flesh. And if you find yourself getting offended, come on. If you find yourself going with the majority, like you said, you reminded us of that scripture, broad is the way. Come on, that's the, that, that's the unrighteous way. The, but the narrow path is, is very few. If you find yourself agreeing with a lot of the world's opinions and feeling how you think, you know, telling you how you should feel, it's amazing. Like, you know, that individual was like, don't, you, you don't get to tell me how, how I should feel. But I'm like, but you, yeah, you listen to these propaganda stations that constantly tell you how to feel. And you think you're educated because of it. You think you're so knowledgeable. And a lot of it is filled with lies. Both sides. Lies. How do you know? Well, I know it's lies because I got the spirit of truth on the inside of me. And sometimes when I'm sitting there and I'm watching and they're saying things, I'm like, mm-mm, that ain't right. Something about that is a lie. But see, if you are patterning yourself after the world, like the world, come on, he said, he said that they're, they're futile in their thoughts. Why? But they become numb. They become callous. But we're patterning ourselves, and how is that happening? Well, how is that happening? You know what the Spirit of God said to me at the beginning of COVID? Beware of entertainment. Beware of entertainment. I said, because hmm. what I've started to see is that entertainment has the agenda of the enemy. I started to recognize and see that much of our entertainment, I don't know about in other countries, but I'm pretty sure y'all watching some of the same stuff or y'all have the same ability or same things that we're streaming over here because of the influence of the West and all of the world. But I know for sure in this nation, entertainment has a devilish assignments. The agendas are coming from demons from the kingdom of darkness. So I started to realize that we don't, we're not really acting like we believe. Come on. That our emotions will always follow our faith. Our thoughts can actually follow your faith. In other words, if your emotions aren't lining up, you finding yourself offended at something, come on, especially if it's being preached in the church, you need to examine. Don't just stay, because it's like, ouch, or because it's uncomfortable, don't just stay back. Because see, when you stay yielded to the Lord, when you stay open and you say, God, I just want truth. It really don't matter who it comes from. I just want truth. I want what you say. When you do that, then God will be able to show you and you'll be able to discern, come on, what's truth, what's of your flesh, what's of the soul, why you're being bothered. Because the offense, and you can actually shift it. You can make a shift. I remember hearing uh, Copeland, Brother Copeland, Kenneth Copeland give a testimony. He was, you know, he's big on prosperity now. But you know, when he first heard about prosperity, he was sitting in a meeting. Brother Hagen is preaching on the prosperity of God and how God desires for us to be prosperous and all this stuff. And he says, and you can hear this testimony, you can look it up yourself. But he said, 
he got so disgusted with that man. He said, what a prideful, arrogant, and he got so angry. And he stood up and he started to walk out because he said, I've never heard of such prideful arrogance in my life. He was offended. But you know what happened? Because he was yielded, come on, because he was open, come on, he wanted, he wanted God and he wanted all that God has. He wanted all because his heart was connected in that way, hungry for the things of God. The spirit of truth on the inside of him said, sit down and listen. So he had a choice to make. We all know the choice that he made because we know where he preaches. We know where he lives now. We know what he's walking in. But see, you may find yourself missing God. I remember during the height of the, the pandemic, the Lord told me to, to warn our people, particularly, I believe it was for the body of Christ as well, but particularly for our people to beware, beware of offense and fear. And I remember teaching a message on this because I said, I said, those two things the Lord was showing me, it's those two things that are stirring up more division than anything in the body. And really, it's, it's, it's over truth. People were beginning, well, and I mean, it's no new thing. People have always been offended at the words of Jesus. But I said, I had to warn our congregation, beware, be careful. If you find yourself offended, it's not from God when it comes to his truth. And that's how you'll be able to determine it. God, open me up. Help me. Show me. I know y'all see me jumping and dancing in worship, and I'll run as soon as I see somebody else run. Or sometimes I'm a first responder. I just go when I just... Holy Ghost is moving on me. And uh, th this is one of those truths that I've discovered. You know, I know you see that now, but I, I didn't always used to be that way. I was one of those that would sit there and be like, hey, y'all just being ridiculous. And I would be like, this is not necessary. Y'all being too extra. I was like that. I know they say... <laughs> In camp meeting, uh, Mark Hankins' camp meeting, we were just at some of the, his meetings, and uh, for whatever reason, that somebody decided the brilliant idea to give out awards. And so I got the best Amen Corner Award. Because <laughs> they're like, it don't matter where we are. Even if we're at Raymond, the big old auditorium, they're like, I hear you, I hear you, you saying amen. <laughs> I wasn't like that. But I'm, I'm showing you something that <laughs> when I got, I, I sat there, and as a matter of fact, there was a particular meeting where this was happening, rejoicing, people getting wild and the crazy in the Holy Ghost, fire God, and drunken spirit, laughing, crying, running, every kind of expression you can think of. And I'm sitting there like, oh, Lord, here we go again. Pastor's kid. <sighs> and I remember I made an adjustment in my heart. I said, okay, God, if this is you, in other words, if it's real, I want a part of it. Because this is the truth. I've been running by my flesh and what my mind was saying, and it was, it, it, these things aren't necessary. Y'all look stupid. That's my, that's my mind. Y'all look foolish. <laughs> Even laughed at some people. <laughs> that's hilarious. But on the inside, God, if this is you, help me to see it. And I want it. I want it because it seems fun anyway. But I really do want it if it's you. If it's not you, mm -mm. So what happened? God, he responds. If you're hungry, he's, he'll respond. He'll fill you. So this means in anything, this is in any area, I'm giving you an example. So I'm sitting there and I say, Lord, if it's real, help me. I want it. And I remember just sitting there. And now th at this time, it's not so much like my, my, my posture is a little different. Just in case something's about to go down. So I'm still sitting down. And as I'm sitting, 
the minister gets up, stands up. And again, I'm like, <laughs> this is so foolish. I mean, it's ridiculous. You look like a fool. Minister gets up, and the first thing they say, God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And I thought, wise people think they're wise. <laughs> people that are educated think they're educated. And I just thought, huh, that's funny. <laughs> Good point. Because I was open, I began to just kind of, I chuckled. And as I chuckled in the natural, Holy Ghost got a hold of that chuckle. Come on, by grace, through. Lord, if it's you, I'll just, I'll go with him. As he spoke his word, it kind of activated something in me. He said the word, God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. I'm thinking, this is pretty foolish. But why is he doing it to put to shame? All of a sudden, it starts to make sense. And I just, <laughs> Holy Ghost grabs a hold of that chuckle. And before you know it, I am crying, laughing on the floor. This is just one thing, right? One thing, one aspect. There's so many beautiful things in the Lord. Why am I pointing this out? Because see, if we don't stay open and see, even going back to this, this honor and giving, pastor already said it. My, my husband already said it. Uh, pastor Ken already said it. You know, I, I wasn't always the most generous. And partly it was because I'm always calculating. It's got to make sense. This doesn't make sense. And God was trying to get me to put down my calculator and to respond to my heart. He was trying to get me to operate not out of my reasoning. He wanted me to start operating out of my heart, which is what? My spirit. So when you stay open and you say, God, I want you to show me. Come on. You use your faith because he's given you by everything in the kingdom is access by grace. That means it's God who makes it available, but it only happens to you and to me when we use faith. We got to use the withdrawal slip. And guess what? He gave us the withdrawal slip too. <laughs> he had to give us everything. And so I'm accessing these things, and I'm discovering these things, and boy, oh boy, the kind of freedom that you experience. I, I, the reason why I'm talking about this, what, where are you going? Why are you all over the place? I'm not. I, I, I want to show you something. When you use, when you understand that everything in the kingdom is by grace, so grace is God's it's him that makes it available, right? I like the way Mark Hankin says it. He says, you know, faith is our grip on God but grace is God's grip on us in other words he talks about how you know when he's walking uh when he's uh he as a grandfather is walking his grandchildren little small little grandchildren across the street he says I'll grab their hand and he says when I grab their hand he says you know they may grab my hand but their little hand grabbing my big hand is not much of a grip but when I grab their hand, I'm holding on to them. He said, that's like God's grace. By grace through faith. How are you going to accomplish this, the ministry that God has called you unto, unto? By grace through faith. You're believing. Come on. How are you going to live like God called you to live? He says, put off the old man. Put on the new man. How are you going to do it? By faith. By grace through faith. Grace was already made available. The account has already been opened. It's been open to you at the death, burial, resurrection when you became a born again believer. It's been made available to to you how are you going to access come on the different things that he has for you how are you going to accomplish how are you going to live like it's true don't act like you don't have control over your thoughts you can control them if they're thoughts that don't line up with God you just simply put it out and put in the thoughts that God wants you to have and guess what your emotions will line up your emotions will come on come in an agreement you'll begin to start feeling the same way you'll begin to come on start pleasing him in every way it just won't be outwardly it would be inwardly 
And that is a living testimony. And when you're faithful in those things, come on, hallelujah, you are faithful in keeping your own house. Come on. God is going to expand you, and he's going to cause you, call you to a, a specific thing and a specific uh, work and a specific thing that he has graced you to do. And it will be that same, come on, the same way that you, by grace, through faith, come on, was able to live holy and able to live righteously and able to believe what he said about you. You have victory over the sin, death, hell, the grave, all these things. You have victory, authority over it. The same way, by grace, through faith, is the same way when you step out into what he's called you to. You'll know it's by grace through faith. I just got to see what he says and believe it, and I'm going to live like it's true. I said on Monday, sometimes we miss the spiritual because we're looking for the spectacular. Spectacular, you know what, you know what spiritual looks like on a daily basis? It's nothing spectacular. Ain't nothing spectacular about waking up, Putting your flesh under, spending time with the Lord. Sometimes your flesh is like, oh, what? who cares what you think? Shut up. That's when I lift my voice louder. My kids are always like, mom prays so loud. And it's like, y'all don't know I'm trying to overcome my flesh. Ha ha ha. Put some action. The supernatural ain't always spectac spectacular, but I promise you, if you understand this principle, it's by grace, through faith. You walk out that plan. You walk out that calling. You walk out the purpose. Come on. And as you're faithful in the little, keep in this house. Come on. He'll make you rule over a little more. And a little more. And a little more. Ruling your city. Ruling, come on, in spiritual authority in your nation and everywhere else he's called you to be. Amen. God bless you.